So, we will look into a net zero energy building, right. Now, a net zero energy building, as I said, we have so far looked into issues like indoor air quality. Before that, we looked into materials of varieties of kind. And one of the component is, and also we have looked into operational energy where it plays role, materials play role. So, now we are looking at more at the energy issues. And uh, uh, detailed energy efficient building design is not part of this course, but the factors and their levels will be clear. What are the factors, how we take account of will be clear, clear from this discussion. So, we are talking of net zero energy building, right? Net zero energy building, net zero energy building, net zero energy building, net zero energy building which reduces the energy needs through efficiency gains such that the balance of energy can be supplied using renewable technologies. So, basically you know energy first thing is you got to reduce the energy needs and then uh, if you have such system which can generate energy in the building itself, then you can even supply back to the grid which is also called net negative building you know negatively. So, so, basically if this energy that we are using from external sources in the building itself, there should be locally non-polluting renewable sources and all that. So, major cons consumer of energy in building is HVAC, heating, ventilation and air conditioning, lighting and appliances. So, energy efficient building of course, reduce the energy needs and it can cut it down to 40 percent. Now, net zero would get this energy from renewable sources like solar energy. So, you know uh, when I look at the complete time during my value energy you know value engineering we perform or rather try to see the you know you can say the planning horizon of the building or maybe life intended design life of the building. First of planning analysis then systematic design, design development, working drawings etcetera, construction and then operational maintenance. So, this is the thing. So, by doing basically the I can have cost saving largely in this phase, right? This phase. So, here there is basically during this phase initially some cost saving I can arrive at, but large saving I can actually reach in this part, you know, in this, this part. So, this is the acceptance line, this is the resistance line, there I can, so this is a, you know, this, this is, uh, if you do basically planning and analysis stage, so you can get maximum benefit over the period of time. So, pre-design analysis is required for, of course, net zero building. Now, what are the factors which go into affect the energy efficient building design? First of all, of course, this co ground coverage, that will be part of the building itself. So, that is the requirement, functional requirement and that is my form a constraint in the sense that I have to ensure a particular level of ground coverage, height. Then these are the kind of decision variables. That means the factors which affect the energy efficiency. Sh building form, building form, orientation, then roof, wall, window type because the materials in the roof or wall let us say there can be several components we have seen something called u value earlier several components so roof wall and window all this play a role and of course i can have walls with solar panels which will generate energy so parameters are you know like first of all i can have shape 
I'm talking of shape parameters. That's essentially building form. Now, how it is relevant, although we'll not do really a calculations here, the relationship which you have discussed might have elsewhere. Now, supposing I have this shape, this is my north direction, this is south, and this is east. Now, you know, this doesn't receive no radiation. This receives radiation in some winter, winter radiation. And sorry, south receives winter radiation. This, this, I mean, this east, east doesn't. South receives winter radiation, winter radiation. And east might be in the summer morning, and west might, west might be in the summer evening, afternoon. Now, same area you consider, and say, let us say square, same area, area is same, same. Now, this will receive, depending upon, because this will be less than this, so this will receive less radiation during winter, right? And this anyway will not receive radiation. And summer radiation, you know, we ex the roof area is same. This area, if it is A, this is also A. So roof area is same. So that doesn't make any difference. But how orientation affects? Because now this will receive more winter radiation. This will re receive summer radiation in the morning more. This will receive summer radiation in the afternoon more. So you can see the amount of radiation re received is a function of the basically perimeter considering the roof same or the surface area of the walls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So different alternative if I choose, I'll get different, you know, different, uh, different energy. So somebody may take something like a cuboid. So ratio is 1 is to 1. Ground floor area is A. Building height is H, let us say. So roof area is say X square. Wall areas are X into H, if it is all. 1 is to 1. So, x obviously one can find out x under root a. Now, if you take this same ground area is a, ground area is a, building height is h, roof area is now, one is x, other is twice x. So, if x is the smallest dimension, x is the smallest dimension, this is x let us say, so area will be 2x square. So, all areas are, you know, 2x into h, 2xh and bd, that is xh, this one, this x, you know, x, this will be x into h. So, one can actually find out x, which will be 0 0.707 of a. So, this is this x dimension, right. So, this is also a cuboid ratio 1 is to 2. And obviously, depending upon its orientation, so surface areas are different, depending upon Surface areas are dependent, different depending upon what you call aspect ratio. If you take aspect ratio 1 is to 4, you will find this smallest dimension x is equals to 0.5 under root a and so on. So, surface area, so this could be. Now, take another shape, let us say a T shape. Then this would be, if I call this a smallest dimension, this is x, let us say this is 2x this is again x, x, and this is again, you know, e is uh, uh, 3x and so on, because this is x, this is x, and this is x, so it is 3x and this is 2x. So again, it will depend upon, this dimension will depend upon area, I mean, you know, per factor multiplied by area. So this will vary from building to building. So you can see that shape has got a role, whether it's cuboid or t or sort of a cross shape and I shape and you know C shape, L shape. So therefore, your shape is a factor, shape is a factor and you can vary the shape depending upon the constraints of the site, ground coverage, etc., etc., whatever the site constraint. So, one can choose different types of shapes, right. Okay. Then external shading multipliers, they are essentially the ratio uh, 
of the total solar gain received through the window shaded by an external shading device to that received from the same window if it was completely unshading. So, basically this is these are also some variable parameters. This is my window let us say sunshade although I will not go might may not go into the details of this in this one. Now, supposing this is the sunshade you know this is my window this is my window this is my window this is the sun, sun shade. So, they block the solar radiation. So, the type of shading that you use and the length and dimensions they are also factors they can be also factors you know they could be controlled. So, shading multipliers are the basic basically is a factor which is a ratio of total solar gain received through the window shaded by an external shading to that if it were it if it was not shaded at all. So, one might have average values or you can actually calculate out for hourly time and for various solar angles etcetera etcetera for you know this this particular one, but I am I think I am not going into that I am not going into the calculation part of it because uh, this those who have done it as another course they, they would have come through it in detail. Next is the orientation this is another factor orientation for example, you know I can have number of orientation possible. So, let us say this this is north, this is south, east, west etcetera etcetera. So, several orientations are possible. Let us say I can have this is a orientation and this is this was north, now this is facing northeast, this is facing this is facing another you know like one you know another side I mean basically the same one now facing this side. Uh, this is east, east and south or southeast and this is facing. So, this way you can rotate this building here of course, it is all square. So, therefore, they look similar, but if you look at this, this, this 3 if I rotate 45 degree another rotation and so on so forth. So, I can rotate them in different orientation and as my orientation changes, as my orientation changes the amount of solar radiation received will change. Therefore, orientation is a other factor. So, orientation is the other variable factor and if you look at it for all the shapes let us say in this case there are 8 shapes that I discussed earlier, 8 shapes I have discussed you know 8 shapes I have discussed and 8 orientations are possible. So, you will have 64 cases and obviously, you got to choose the best out of them you know so far only 64 cases I have taken. Now, they can be unshaded or oriented towards walls receiving radiation sunshine hours etcetera etcetera. Okay. So, as I said east in the morning, south day long in winter, west afternoon and evening. So, orientation is there. Now, you can have different types of roof alternatives. So, one some, some this, these ones are normally typically used in Indian scenario. For example, uh, most of them are taken for the North Indian scenario actually different types of roof possible are there. So, you can have several types of roof. For example, you have RCC then an insulation inside, mortar then top brick tile, maybe same RCC mortar roof gravel, there is some thermolite mortar RCC plaster. So, these are typical some 8 roof with different type different u values 1 3 7 etcetera etcetera. So, so here we have just taken 8 there can be many more and right. So, there could be wall alternatives if you look at it this is not roof this is wall actually wall alternatives. I can have brick cladding with 200 millimeter thick brick just some examples and the corresponding u values are here. So, if you now look at them I have just taken about 8 wall type. Normally, walls will have same construction in all sides, external peripheral work I am talking of, envelope part of it. All would have, you know, generally they would be same, they can be different, then it adds more to my variables, and all these are my variable. Similarly, then glass, glass is the one which brings in maximum energy, also light, both you know if it is exposed to solar radiation it brings in massive energy. So, there can be different types of 
different types of glass, right? So, which what we call solar gain factor. Now, those who are not familiar, solar gain factor is defined as if you know is is defined as you know you denote it by theta, and total heat gain through the glass is written as A i theta. So, I stands for intensity of radiation, area of the glass, and theta. So, theta is a fraction. It gives you that fraction how much will be included into the building the energy you know the energy that will be solar radiation radiation energy that will be included in the building and normally as you can understand glass is opaque to long wave radiation glass is transparent to solar radiation short wave radiation but it's opaque to long wave radiation therefore it will bring in the radiation and they would be all stored as heat energy within the enclosed space you know and that is that is a significant component. So, glass is tip, therefore, there is another kind of variable. So, you can have different types of glass right. So, there are different types of glasses are possible for example, some sun energy clear glass etcetera etcetera and this is the solar gain factor. All glasses do not have same solar gain factor and in fact, varies with angle of incidence although we can talk in terms of an average solar gain factor. So, point for example, this brings in only 0.42, this is 0.33, somewhere this is 0.52, right. So, it allows 52 percent of the radiation to come into the room while this will have 33 percent. So, glasses are can be another variable actually important variable. So, supposing I have put in some solar panels, right. So, P B cell, then their U values are also to be taken into account. So, when I am looking at net zero building or buildings which can generate energy, one of the ways is what we call building integrated photovoltaic. So, you know the cells and then they also contribute to the U value or properties of the wall itself or roof itself. For example, you have put in something on top of the roof, it will be, it will be, you know, it will, this will also contribute to the thermal properties of the roof system itself. So, supposing I have, you know, thermal properties of wall with solar panels, if I look at it, I can have several overall U value. For example, you have glass, anti reflective coating, you know, ethyl EVA layer, metal backing, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera and thickness could be so much that and so you know the thermal conductivity is this and uh, therefore, specific it is this density is this. So, all these properties of this one also must be known to me and overall whole thing the overall U value of the whole thing I got to take. So, this is a combination of several layer in the wall which is brick, air gap, brick, plaster, then a you know polyvalent fluoride layer small very thick layer on which metal backing sheet because P B cell will have several layers. So, this is what is a P B cell layers altogether anti reflective coating of the glass on top of the P B photovoltaic panel right and uh, the glass will be on the top and anti reflective coating. So, if you look at it U value the way we have calculated same way you know 1 over U is equals to 1 over H O plus sigma L i by K i plus 1 by H i you remember we talked about this. So, thickness of each one divided by their conductivities are known and one can find out the overall U value of the whole thing. So, this is this is one can look into therefore, now that many variables you have. Now, how many then therefore, we have there are 8 glasses, 8 walls, let us say 8 roofs I have just taken 8, 8 orientation and 8 shapes. So, 8 shapes, 8 orientation, 8 types of roof, 8 types of wall right, 8 types of wall and if you are putting photovoltaic on some of them then that would be even more 8 this was 8 uh, orientation right. This is we started from 8 orientation, 8 shape right. 8 shapes, 
eight glasses, eight uh, uh, walls, eight roofs, and maybe they have more. Now, just just in this particular case, and also I have shading device shading. I can think in terms of various shading. So there could be many more. So if you just find out how many variables I have, this would be eight into eight into eight sixty four into eight. Uh, how much this will make in the 8 to the power, 8 to the power n, whatever it is. So this is 64, 64 into 8, 8, 8 is 512, and that multiplied by 8, 4000 something, and that multiplied by 8, something like that. On that many number of options you have, that many number of options you have, and you got to select you got to select one or the best out of them, which is therefore is a problem of essentially is a problem of optimization. We will discuss about the simple optimization that can be applied to such system subsequently. So, you see the design would be selecting the best out of all this and these are simply scenario of discrete domain. That means, my domain is in n dimensional hyperspace, n dimensional hyperspace, right? n dimensional means orientation is one, shape is another, two dimension, wall variables are wall thick, wall very you know, wall type is another. So, there can be n and if I each one has got a let us say n dimensional hyperspace and let us say each one variable is let us say number of variables, number of levels of the first one is let me call it as x 1 into x 2 and if they are all same that will be x i to the power n, where x i is a you know x i is a uh, x to the power n, x would be the number of option for each one of them, you know number of alternatives available to me levels available to me for each one of them. So, that many number of possibilities are there and if I plot it, try to plot this, these are all discrete points. These are all discrete points, they are all continuous, means wall type 1 to wall type 2 is not a continuous variable, right. It is not a continuous variable, in between there is nothing, so they are discrete points. So, each one would be a discrete point, I have to select the best, best out of them. So, this is n dimensional hyperspace and such thing can be done by some optimization technique. I will talk about that optimization technique which you can use, but conventional optimization techniques you may not be able to use them. The reason is because uh, these are not continuous domain, continuous values and some of them are qualitative. I am talking in terms of orientation, right. How do you quantify them? You can quantify them by you can codify it orientation 1, orientation 2, orientation 3, orientation 8. So, but but you cannot quantify them easily. You can quantify them through angles, but that is relatively complicated. Similarly, shapes. How do you shape you cannot quantify in any manner? Aspect ratio you can do if it is all rectangular. If it is T type, then the aspect ratio also would not work. So, therefore, Many of these variables are actually qualitative and can be codified, but directly we may not be able to use them. So, such kind of thing we can optimize using modern day evolutionary algorithm which works on coded variable rather than uh, coded variable rather than actual variable value of the variables themselves. So, this is we talk, okay, we will come to that one. So, in that case we talk in terms of if it is if you are using and such evolutionary algorithm, one of them is genetic algorithm. There are advanced version of this, but I will just give you a simple one which can be applied to similar sort of this system. So, it works on, uh, it works on analogy to the evolutionary process. So, goes from a set of given assumed solution to improved solution, keeping the fit population there, 
keeping the fit population there and the one which are not fit, fit population, we just remove them. So, that is why the terminology fitness has come. Now, I am sure most of you have done some course on optimization, linear programming, etcetera, etcetera, and you have heard something called objective function. We, you have something, we have heard something called objective function. Z maximize Z equals to, you know, some function of the decision variable x1, x2, etcetera, etcetera. That is what you have done and it could be linear function in case of linear optimization problem. Here, same thing we call as fitness function. So, according to this, we decide which is fit and then we are able to choose the best out of x to the power n options, right. So, so basically that is how we go about it. So, we will come to this sometime later on. Generally, we maximize maximize uh, okay i'll i'll come to i'll just come to this before that i'll come to uh, just i'll not look at this first so first let us say we like to minimize the heat gain minimize the summer heat gain minimize the summer heat gain minimize minimize summer heat gain and maximize winter heat gain, especially climates in climates where there is severe winter, winter is also there and summer is there. So, like New Delhi, you see this will have winter is cold in the winter and warm in the summer. In fact, you have three distinct seasons which I will not talk here. But where let us say Chennai or Mumbai or similar sort of climates are there, then this may not be an, this may not be a major issue. Now, so this is what we would like to do. If I am not putting any additional energy generation into the building. So, if I want to maximize this and minim, you know maximize this and minimize this, now one can use a weightage factor. Why? The cost of cooling is 3 to 4 times. So, this is 3 to 4 times more than cooling is 3 to 4 times costlier than heating. So, you know cooling is costlier. Therefore, you can understand this actually because heating means I can directly heat the space, right? Or oil oil heating system may be there. So, which the losses are relatively, you know, losses is there, but the process where withdrawal of heat is there, the energy consumed is much higher. Work done is much higher. Sometimes you do have to go much below the temperature at which you want to maintain the space because of issues like condensation and removal of you know moisture etcetera etcetera. So, control you know control of humidity and so on. So, usually this 3 to 4 times cost there, but typically what we do is in these types of situation we take this as twice. So, we multiply the twice summer heat gain summer heat gain minus the. So, we minimize or if I am maximizing then I will maximize winter heat gain minus twice summer heat gain. Right now, you see, if I am generating, so that's what is being done. Two twice cooling load plus the heating load. Now, if I am generating some solar energy, takes sixty percent is a factor compensating for the winter heat gain rejection due to the insulation property of the solar panel in the wall. So, if I put a solar panel, this will not also allow winter heat to come in. Right? It will absorb all of it, and the if it was not there, the advantage that you have got that is not there. Therefore, a 0.6 factor is used here to multiply for if I am using a building integrated PV panel minus twice cooling load plus heating load. So, that is I am trying to maximize. So, this is this that means I will try to maximize this 
envelope design should be done which will actually reduce my cooling load and this is twice than the heating load. So, this, this is no, so this I like to maximize this function. In fact, this I want to minimize and this I want to maximize, right. So, this I want to minimize. Since cooling load is much more critical and consumes major chunk of power, it is given higher weightage too. So, that is what is done, right. That is what is done. So, that is, so if you look at some cases, so we look into some case studies, one case study or one or two case studies, let us say. Let us say it is a resort building in Uttaranchal and length, you know there are different, this is the kind of shape of the building, area, height, window area, right and the other lengths 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8 possible type of walls are there and correspondingly lengths are given. Roof area is 2590 meter square, 3.6 meter per floor. So, it is a three storied building as you can see from here, three storied building making it uh, sorry four storied, four storied building and built up area is this much right and then cooling load if you calculate out for each one of them you can calculate out cooling load cooling load by modeling them in various you know like there are a number of open source softwares you can model them equest for example i will not uh, you know equest there are many energy plus there are several of them you can try it out your hand in any building in any one of them they are open source software so cooling load if you you know if you modify this and optimize this, somewhere modifying this and if you optimize, then you might get something like this. Heating load, you can optimize, you can get it like this. This one had no solar energy, this would have something like this. And finally, if you find out load per unit area, you can reduce it down to, in fact, optimizes, if you optimize it, maximize your solar energy, then you might actually load per unit area even can go to negative, load per unit area can go to negative. So, as long as you use, uh, you know, uh, building integrated portable PV systems, you can actually increase it, right. So, so this was, this is something like this. Now, how it is done, how it is done? Okay, there's a, another case study. I'll come back to the I'll come to this. Uh, this at the moment I am not really exp, ex, explaining what this is. I'll come to this sometime later on. But this is case another you know case for example another case building. This is another building. And if you have roof area one eight six, so this is showing four wall type, and again story height is fifteen meters five stories and uh, you know there are two, three, four, five stories and again if you model this and find out optimized of course optimization you have to you know there is a written separate program was written for that and you find that you can actually again total there can be an energy saving there is no net so it will be percentage saving could be 24 percent earlier one was earlier one was 38 percent load per sorry load per unit was minus 38 and here load per unit area is saving. So, you can actually by putting in building integrated photovoltaics, you can actually save on to the energy, it can be net negative, here is net negative. Third case, okay, fitness value I will come to this, the same one, another, another case and it will show you the load per unit area is you know not negative here, but it is just reduced from 85 to 85 to you know modified if you mod modify this number and finally optimize you get 80, 30, 0. There is another case. So, if you look at this, if you look at now calculate the economics of it over the years, how much you are getting, it would give you this you know initially you might 
have additional cost, but if you calculate out on the basis of daily schedule of rates, the cost increase is this much, but if you find, find out, you know, total financial analysis, I will just not go through the table or anything of that kind, it might give you something like this is the year and solar power generated is given by solar power. So, this is this is the original um, original you know the total cost if you look at it. Saving is this much, this is the consumption and this is this is basically solar power generation, total cost saving could be something like this. So, green one shows us total cost saving, it is around 12 to 12.8 percent or so. So, you can actually save on to cost, right? <laughs>